I'm asking, has the workplace become a bit of a hostile place uh, for older workers, particularly those over 50? Now, there's a lot of workplaces where unconscious bias training has become all but mandatory. Um, after Black Lives Matter, there was huge amounts of discussion about white privilege, having to accept that you might be racist by virtue of the fact that you're white. There's many diversity qu quotas. I don't know if you've had a look at the civil service application process, for example. There are more boxes to tick than one could count, really. Um, there's huge amounts of groupthink, I would argue, in some businesses and within the public sector as well. So I'm going to be asking you whether you've experienced that, whether you know anyone who doesn't want to go back into the workplace, actually, because it's just got a little bit too woke, I guess is the word for it, um, and that it might be a little bit hostile, actually, for them as an older person. Ben, I'll go to you on this. Do you think that I'm talking rubbish or do you think there's something in this? No, I mean, you're, not, you're certainly not talking rubbish. There is something called environmental, social and governance, ESG, that companies now pretty much across the board have to adhere to if they wish to get institutional shareholders or, or, or loans made to them. And ESG effectively is the corporate equivalent uh, you might regard it. I've got to be careful because I've got shareholders and lenders as well. But um, Sorry to put you in an awkward <laughs> spot then. No, but ESG is effectively the corporate equivalent of woke. It requires companies for the first time uh, ever really to be looking after more than their shareholders, employees and their creditors, which are your legal obligations mm. as an employer. All of a sudden you have to worry about the communities in which you operate, um, uh, putting money and, uh, uh, you know, um, having a patrician sort of attitude to the communities in which you operate, making sure that your policies and what you do as a company is environmentally friendly, and then, of course, making sure on the governance side that you've got the appropriate number of women, ethnic minorities, etc., on the board of directors. And all of this is a burden on business because every regulation creates a need to comply and through compliance comes additional cost. And so as an employer and as an, a shareholder in a business, I can see detractions. But I don't think it's a huge burden on over 50s per se. You know, over 50s, I think we come from a we come from a slightly more robust era when you just kind of bit your lower lip and got on with life. So if someone tells you to do something like learn about critical race theory, for example, that you may think is irrelevant, you'll do it anyway, bite your lower lip and get on with it. But is that a good thing? Joe, that older people who may disapprove of what they've been told to do by HR departments should just suck it up and get on with it? Um, I'd slightly take offence mm. um, at the idea that older people are this Homogenous generic group, group yes. who are incapable of dealing with anything <laughs> that, you know, isn't stuck in the rut of where they want to live in the, back in the 1960s or 1950s. There are many people who work way into their 50s, 60s and 70s and beyond. I think the people that we're probably looking at here are people who have maybe been out of the workplace mm. for a bit. And I think one of the problems for people applying for work, I mean, it's fine. You can ask Ben, he's just given you a job, you're fine. Michelle will hate you. <laughs> um, but, you know, joking aside, nowadays, even if you want to apply for a job with a supermarket or a fast food outlet, you don't just go in and see the manager. You have to do it online. So for people who've been out of the workplace and have been out of that computerised system. I think that's quite off-putting. But it's interesting you say that. Sorry to interrupt, but Leslie has been in touch. I think I can get this up on the screen. Um, maybe, anyway, she says, how do older people find jobs? Many of us cannot negotiate searching for online vacancies. Yeah. And job centres only help those in receipt of benefits. Well, I don't, I don't know about the, the job centre thing. I don't think that's necessarily true. But I, I, I do think it is this online um, process, and I think when you get into certain levels of work, um, perhaps further up uh, the, the sort of corporate structure, you're basically sifted by algorithm. Yes. So if you're not, if your answers aren't quite right and they're not or you're not quick enough or something like that you're going to be at a disadvantage this is the sort of thing that actually breaks down people's confidence and then you have a thing which i don't know if you do it in your company ben but it's quite commonplace in many organizations that your potential colleagues who in many cases might be younger than you 
are then the people who will decide whether or not you're suitable. Now, that's why we come back to the idea that all old people are useless past it and might be problematic. So if you've got those people who've got that mm. mindset interviewing people, you know, it's, it's... I think, I think, I think there is... I think it is fair to say that there is an element of ageism and I do not wish to, you know, put absolutely everyone in their over 50s into some kind of backward <laughs> please, box please that don't. don't want to talk about, um, you know, uh, social issues I mean, or I social do, justice I do find issues. It That's quite not what I'm saying. That, you know, a pensioner, it is the only definition, description of a person based on their benefit status. <laughs> You know, you don't say pensioner Judy Dench or pensioner Rod Stewart is... or pensioner Helen Mirren, do you? But, you know, it's a granny. Have a go, gran, or a pensioner in a car accident who's 67 or something, who might be driving yeah. a Harley Davidson. It's outrageous. You don't say benefit claimant. Well, unless you're writing a newspaper article, Well, yes, perhaps. exactly. But, that's um, it. But, that's, but do you know what I mean? But yeah, like, I do get what you mean. The ageism is as bad. And in the um, conversations I've always had with HR people on diversity and inclusion, diversity and inclusion comes in many shapes. It's not just but about... This is, but this is the problem with the diversity and inclusion stuff, because I think it's all about box ticking when it comes to gender and race. And even sexual orientation now um, is something that you can fill in on application forms in this country for a job. Um, but we don't seem to welcome diversity of opinion in a lot of companies and businesses. And I'm talking from personal experience. I won't name the company I worked for, but I worked in a company as a young graduate. I felt quite ostracised, actually, by a lot of the management because they... Uh, could not get their heads around why someone might, for example, vote Brexit or why yeah. someone might have vaguely socially conservative views on one way or another or why someone might not buy into the unconscious bias training, that sort of thing. And it was one of the main reasons why I ended up leaving that company. And I think older people might be even more affected by that because they're less likely to be woke. Yeah, they're less likely to be woke. There is a law, by the way, against sifting through employment applications based on age. That is against yeah. the law. You're meant to be blind to age. Um, but undoubtedly, you know, one of, the con one of the issues I have with woke, and let, let me just define woke. I see woke as the ostensible championing of minority rights at the exclusion of the majority and, and often to the detriment of the majority. That's how I see it. And I use the word ostensible because often in championing these rights, they end up actually disadvantaging the group of people they're trying to promote. But, I mean, I see part of the problem with woke is an inability and a lack of tolerance to take on board any other view. You either go with mm. that particular ideology or you're somehow a right-wing, swivel-eyed, lunatic, fascist, xenophobic, racist, you know, and, you know, the list goes on. I've been accused of all of that. Um, and none of which is, is true, of course. Um, so you say. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't. And um, so I think there is that issue. But, uh, you know, the, getting people back into work at the age of 50, I, th I think there are many greater problems at play, mostly economic ones, which yes. are driving plus 50, or, you know, people over the age of 50 out of the workplace. Part of it is they've had a good run over the last 40 years with asset values going up. So they can afford to retire early. Part of it and is... The pandemic may have... Um, uh, accelerated the process. Enjoy that. And, and they will have, you know, if you're in your sort of between 50 and 60, and particularly if you're a woman, you are um, what has been called the sandwich generation. You are probably having to help out with grandchildren and you are almost certainly yeah. having to deal with parents or older relatives in care. So, you know, the care pressures... Or caring the, responsibilities The caring key. responsibilities become much greater. So, you know, what job are you looking for? You want to be as flexible and maybe more so than um, a young parent without the protection, that, mm. of course, which is afforded on maternity and paternity rights. So both the Labour Party, the reason why we're talking about this is because, uh, firstly, Alison Pearson wrote a column in The Telegraph where she Based says the workplaces have become anecdote. woke. Well, I have my own anecdotes, and other people do, including relatives of mine um, who have decided not to go in, back into the workplace for reasons including um, what the workplace is now like in, in a cultural way. So I do think it, the point does stand. But also the Labour Party and the 
Conservatives, of course, are looking at ways in which they can try and get people back... Into the workplace. Into the workplace. Yeah. And of course, that's great for the economy in their view, and they want more tax income. But how on earth should they go about doing it? What would the one thing... Well, for, I mean, over 50s is a particular category of people. But the labour market is broken right across all age groups. And the real fundamental... The biggest problem, by the way, the United Kingdom faces is the problem I'm about to describe, which is that it doesn't pay to work anymore. You know, the median wage in the United Kingdom is £30,000. And the net after-tax take-home pay with £30,000 a year is roughly the maximum you can get on universal credit. So that there has to be a gap between what you can get on benefits and what you get if you work in order to get people to work. It's economically daft to think you'd get people back into the workplace if they're better off not working or if, if, the, if the gap is marginal. And effectively what's happened over the last 25 years, I mean, I'd say 13 years without wishing to nail the Conservatives completely on it, but what's happened over the last 13 years is that we've become a kind of third world economy. We haven't innovated, we haven't become more productive, and as a result, and we've taken lots of immigration on, so population in the United Kingdom's gone up, and the ability to generate a more productive, higher growth economic model has disappeared. And we're relying ever increasingly on cheap labour. So essentially, in terms of job opportunities for over 50s, are you saying that there are simply fewer? I, I'm saying the, 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 the problem I've just described is right across the age groups. With the over 50s, there are particular reasons why the over 50s w fall out of the workplace. One of them is, I think, because they've saved a bit of money. The other is that the pension laws that keep being tweaked makes it un unnecessary for them. You know, when you get up towards 60, you want to start saving more on your pension. But actually, tax-wise, you're penalised for that. You have a that. lifetime cap, don't you? You have so a lifetime cap and there's a, and there's and, a lack of women offset. who have been treated appallingly. So many women who thought they would get a pension at 60... Yeah, have been cut out of it. ...all their lives and seeing their pension fade away like yeah. the women. So we've got, That's for a multitude yeah. of reasons, mostly to do with tax... So when Rishi Sunak says, you know, let's not become just the tax-cutting country and rely on cutting taxes for, to, uh, to, to grow, and let's look at innovation. But taxation, government taxation policy is fundamentally important when it comes to the labour market and it comes to uh, there are you know, so growth and businesses. Bad incentives. And there's so many topsy-turvy bad at incentives. At the bottom, at the top. Everywhere. There's so many incentives yeah. not to work overtime, not to do extra hours, not to pick up extra work with our benefit system as well. It really is a mess. If there was one thing I would like the government to do, it would be to reform our tax system and just make it simpler and just take out some of those disincentives. Um, but I do think there's an emotional argument here too. I was just reading, let me find it. Someone said, and I can't find it now, but they said that once you're over 50, you become invisible in the workplace. And I think there is quite a lot of that, particularly from middle-aged women, I've heard this. Yeah. Oh, you become invisible. Why would they take me on as compared to uh, someone else, necessarily well, you someone lose, younger? You it's all about the confidence. youth. And, and people lose confidence, particularly if they've been out of mm. the workplace for whatever reason. Um, and particularly if they've got, you know, they're worried about asking time off because their mother's had a fall and she's in a care home or, or they've got to look after the grandchildren. I used to work many years ago for a very well-known company that specialises in products for people over a certain age. And I was their web editor. Mm. And the first thing that they asked me to write about was to tell people how to clean their car during the winter. And I pointed out that if these people had got to the age at which point they were eligible for all these fantastic special offers, the chances were they'd cleaned their car during some winters. And we need to stop patronising people. 50's not old, 60's not old. We're all having no. to work into our 60s and 70s. Um, and it's a two-way yeah. thing. It is a two-way thing. And I think I, I personally love working with people of all ages. I think you learn so much from one another. I've learned, I've learned a tremendous <laughs> amount from uh, older people in my work life. Um, but I do think some young people do dismiss the views of older people for one reason or another. And I do think woke does, unfortunately, have a lot to do with it. Um, now, I'm going to try and go to some views now. Um, we have... Uh, um, 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 um. Yes, this was Elizabeth said. She said, good luck getting into the workplace if you're over 50. You just become invisible. And if you have a disability as well, you might as well forget it. I think that's, yeah, that, well, it's a sad, sad truth in some sectors anyway. Margaret says, 
Why isn't it just the best person for the job and then you don't have to be worried about all this nonsense? I Presumably you're talking about, Margaret, how, how people are chosen. Oh, well, she's absolutely because. right. Everything should be based on meritocracy but, but the, and we should be blind to everything but else. the best person for the job has got to, um, you know, align with whatever organisation's mission statement, to use that dreadful phrase, or... You know, I mean, what, what did you call but it? But I think a lot of people, I think ESG, a lot of people pretend environmental they do. I think there's a lot of people yeah. who pretend, oh, yes, I've signed up to, uh, you know, all of this green stuff and social justice stuff. And oh. actually this, they're well. thinking, what a load of old nonsense <laughs> when they get home and speak to their wife or husband, partner, children, whatever. I do think that is the case. A well, lot of people, a lot of people have to bite their tongue a lot in the workplace. Um, but not here at GB News, because we are <laughs> one of the homes of free speech in this country.